hey guys and welcome back to my channel in the background you're going to hear my fan because i am ultra hot and yes i have my ac running so let's get into this review and with a dash of spoilers so evil season three episode two the demon means now this was a very good episode and like i said none all the episodes from season one to now are really good they are great they take you on a journey you know, so it gives you high points and low points and midpoints, but it's awesome. I'm loving this show. I am addicted. I am hooked on this show. So, Victor Lacant. Sorry, I had a little pause there. Victor Lacant, the Vatican Ultra Secret Service guy, whatever. Um, tell me something. For those of you that that watch the show, did you hear David say yes? Because I didn't hear him say yes. Did you hear him say yes? I know he got a call. And I know that the first call he got, he didn't say anything. And then the second call he got, he had to leave Kristen and Ben where they were at to go do this thing for Victor Lacan's. Now, what I don't like is that when David came from doing his churchly duties, and his I'm going to say his priest duties, he was in his room and Victor Lacan was in his room. I don't like people that do that. Don't pump for me. Let me know you coming. Okay? Because I could, what if David would have got stalked naked and gone to bed? He would have been standing there looking at a lot of, you know, come on now. That's somebody's personal and private space. Just don't make, take it upon yourself to be in somebody's room. I didn't like that. Maybe I'm a little bit too sensitive on that, but I just don't like it. I don't, I don't like my space being, you know, invaded. I don't like that. So he's confronted by Victor Lacan. And, you know, he got this folder and he's talking about all this stuff. And he is from season two because I remember him that he was dealing with the RSM, the fertility place that Kristen had issues with. I know he was dealing with that and some other stuff from season two. So now he's back and he got David doing all these deliveries and saying these last rites and meeting him this place and that place. But I don't remember David saying yet. Okay, so we, we got that. I'm trying not to keep you guys too long. Now, Kristen and Andy. So he's about to sell the business for eighty-five thousand dollars, but the work that need to be that needs to be done on the house and to add another room and all that stuff is going to take them over their budget. Kristen, she's working. She's making sixty thousand dollars a year, and she's taking care of the health care and the kids' school. And he mentioned something about let them go to public school. And oh my God, the most irritating part comes up is when these ghost girls start talking all at once. That drives me insane. My God, I'd be like, oh my God, here we go. That part drives me crazy because it's too much talking at one time. And I know as a mom, I've, I've, I've dealt with all that before. Nobody wants to hear that. <laughs> it's funny because it's on the TV show, but I had to do with that in real life. It's horrible. All these little voices in your ear at once. Come on. So, um, they were saying how something happened at public schools and all that kind of stuff. Let me tell y'all something. Things happen at private schools as well. Catholic schools, whatever you want to call them. It happens at those schools too. It's just not, how can I say, it's just not out there as much. But things be going down with those schools, Okay. They just keep a hush-hush cap on it. But anyway, they talk about that. And they're, um, you know, but he still wants the mother out. And he was asking Chris about what's that itemized, you know, income right there. And she said, that's the $2,000 that my mom stays in that garage. So Cheryl is paying $2,000 to stay in that garage. And that's also helping, but he doesn't want that, or he wants Cheryl gone. They have employment issues. Now, the thing that he's doing the toilet, that's what's giving the issues, okay? And I think it may come up probably in a couple of episodes. That thing that's in the toilet is giving the issues because she's trying to do something to get David, not David, sorry, to get Andy out of the house or something done to him. So he flushed it down the toilet because he found it. And she been had they've been having problems with that toilet ever since. Now that little girl that was in the bathroom, she saw blood. And but when they went in here, they said they didn't see any blood. So it's playing tricks on the family. 
Now, let's talk about Vanishing Jack. Not Van Visiting Jack. Visiting Jack. What I don't like is every time something happens, whether it's supernatural or not, whether it's real or not, Kristen is always saying it's, it's make-believe. It's not real. And I get it. You know, something like that. Someone is telling you this 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 person that you cannot see or whatever is... I'm going to die in a few days. Of course, you're going to be skeptical. But you have to leave your mind open for possibilities. Now, just like with Candyman, you got to say his name, you know, a couple of times. And all, Bloody Mary. I don't play those type of games because guess what? Whether I believe it or not, it'd be my luck that I say that shit in the mirror. And guess what? Bloody Mary a pop up or the candy man. I'm just not gonna take it there. I'm just not call me scary what you want. I don't care what you call me. I love my Halloween. I love all things spooky and scary. But that's one thing I don't play with. I don't play with Ouija boards and I damn sure don't play with these little games of say my name three times and I appear. I'm not doing that. I am not doing that. That is not my thing. So because I keep an open mind. What if? I have the what if folder open. What if? Okay, what if it's real? What if Slender Man is real? What if all these things are real? Then what? I'm opening myself to it, right? For it to happen. So that's why I, I, I keep a skeptical mind. And Kristen should too. You don't want to believe all into it. But just be like, what if he's telling the truth? What if this is real? But she doesn't do that. She goes straight into denial mode. Oh, it's not real. It's fake. Yada, yada, yada. Woo, la, la, la. Yee, yee, yee. All that kind of stuff. So, that is that. I just wish she'd take it seriously. So, she takes her daughter with her to Ren Reynolds' um, house. He's locked in his room. He's not coming out. His mother's there for five days. And he's on that computer. And he's talking to Kristen's daughter through the computer on video. And she, he was like, if you saw that, you got five more days and all this kind of stuff. Now, a guy that went to say Agnes did, you know, off himself committed suicide and i think that all ties into that but this boy saw something he wouldn't be that scared if he didn't he saw something so when they went to the uh, it's on steinway street when they went to that abandoned building first of all i'm a new yorker when you see houses like that boarded up or just left abandoned you don't go in there mm -mm. you don't do that no nah. it's not happening it's not going down no I don't care the building was beautiful and it was abandoned. I'm not going up in there. Let me tell y'all something. I don't even like going to Catholic churches because to me, they look spooky. I don't know how many of you guys feel that way, but to me, some of those Catholic churches look spooky as hell. And I don't like going in there. I just don't. It's just me. I don't. I just don't like going in there. Um, so that's that. Now you know. Okay, a little bit about me. All right. So, with that being said, you think I'm going to go look into an abandoned building? <laughs> no, I'm not doing that. All right. So, when Ben and Kristen get in there, first of all, David was with them, but he had to go because he got a call from old boy, Victor, to go do a delivery or whatever he had to go do. I don't know. Something about Victor LeCon just don't sit right with me at all, but we're going to get into that. So, he said he got to go and everything like that. So, Kristen and Ben are starting to be like, oh, what's going on with him? So, Ben and Kristen, they went to the house and they find a guy who'd been squatting there. And he talked about, you know, visiting Jack. And they saw the seven licks was there. The seven licks was there. And Kristen was like, you writing this and you got these kids online being scared. So, she thinks it's a hoax. She thinks it's him. And Ben slaps, snaps a few pictures, and they take it to, back to Reynolds' mom and him, and like, look, it's not real. You know, Kristen's daughter trying to tell him it's not real. This is some guy trying to scare young kids, but he's not buying it. He knows it's real. He knows that he saw something he shouldn't have saw, and it might be coming for him next, but it's real. So, yeah. How do you guys feel about that whole visiting Jack type thing? I don't, I don't, I just don't like all these they, 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 it's good that they put this in here, but people got to keep an open mind and don't be like Kristen because some of this stuff probably could happen. 
And I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to chance it. I'm not trying to see if it does happen. I'm not doing it. I'm not on that type of time. Mm -mm. No way. I'm not on it. So how we got on this whole thing. Now I've been saying visiting Jack. It's not even visiting Jack. It's wandering Jack. And the Monsignor Matthew assigned David and his assessors the task of investigating the wandering Jack to see what becomes of it. To see if it's real, if it's fake, or whatever the case may be. Now let's talk about Leland and Cheryl. These two. Leland helps Cheryl get a new job where she is supposed to promote evil intentions through the internet. Now, a wealthy businessman offers Andy to buy his business for a large sum of money, okay, providing Andy guides, you know, Andy has to guide him to the business that is based in Nepal and, you know, show him the robes and talk to him about it because this guy's offering $800,000. Now, what we didn't know was, guess who's behind that whole scheme is Leland and Cheryl. They trying to draw Andy away from the Prashad house, okay? And why is Cheryl still getting these formaldehyde treatments? Is she not, I mean, she looked like she's alive, so why would she need formaldehyde treatments? Something is not right. Something is not right. What do you, what do you guys think about that? So the most the most creepiest thing about this whole wandering Jack is that when Reynolds gave the addresses to where he would be, because they gave Ben and Kristen one address that was the Steinway Street address, but he had to give him five more. He gave them five more addresses, and when Ben went online to look it up, the houses he kept seeing the wandering Jack in different places of the house. First he was he was in another window. Then the second house, they, the third house, I'm going to say, they clicked on. He was on the porch, baby. The fourth house, he was in the street. It's like he kept getting closer and closer and closer and closer. That was weird to me. That was kind of creepy. That was creepy. Hmm. But you know what? Victor's, back to Victor Lacan, his presence seems kind of sinister to me. In this whole thing, something is not right, and I and I hate that David is mixed up in this, but something is not right. And he tells David that you know there's some evil out there in the street. You know he deals with the human evil, and he's trying to prevent this. He's trying to stop this. It's just really weird to me. It's just really, really weird to me. So, you know, after that visit where David had to go and perform the last rites to that guy, he gets back to his room and guess who's in there again? Victor Lacan. So, Victor was like, where's the item that you have for me? And David, you know, was like, wait a minute, you want to tell me something before I give you this postcard? Because when, the guy, when he finished doing his last rites, the guy gave him a postcard and some, something in his pocket, which we now know is a $100 bill, and they got a secret message in it. So David was like, uh-uh, you going to give me a little something. Mm -mm, you want these items? You want to tell me what's going on. And Victor reveals that the postcard is the key in saving the life of one of David's close friends. And Victor states that their close friend is Grace Ling. And she is currently in China, and her life is under a threat. Now, Grace is a prophet of God who predicts the end of the Catholic Church. And so we, you probably remember Grace from season one. Correct me if I'm wrong, but she was from season one. So, I like how they time this all in. I just, I'm just not feeling the whole... Vatican Secret Service part, you know, being the Vatican's friend and being, you know, you got to be on call every time that you get a, you know, a situation, you got to leave and stop whatever. So, okay, before I end this video, I did like the conversation that Kristen and Ben, not Ben, Kristen and David had, you know, she feels like since her last confession, things been offered David, but he got his own things going on. 
So he assured her that there's she he's gonna always be there for her and that you know they're still friends, they shook on it. I just think Kristen is in love with David. I think they both really love each other, but they can't have one another. He's a priest. She's a married woman. And I think she misses him because she misses being around him. He was he's different for her. You know what I'm saying? So that's what I think it is, guys. But anyway, let me know in the comment section how do you guys like this episode? And I'll talk to you soon.